Okay, here we go. So on the left-hand side is a concept diagram showing 12 pitches, C through B. And each one of them has one to four entries showing what tonality they're a member of. And on the right-hand side are the same uh, 12 pitches from top to bottom uh, organized by tonality. For example, the CS1... Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing for the New Era, Episode 18, Germinating and Clearing the Decks. In today's episode, we re-entered by reflecting that we have two projects going on, the Metaverse VR Ad Hoc Group, which is still in play, and the Social Brain Small World Networks Project, which is in play and due in six weeks. And we have been exploring musical ideas and visual images to interrelate to those work projects. For example, we then made a Metaverse VR theme idea table. The cognitive is meta is beyond, verse is the world, and uh, lab means to do. And then the visual idea, we looked at a bunch of uh, Google images, classic versus futuristic, subtle versus dramatic, realistic versus abstract, etc. And then we explored four scales that we've been working with in this series. What we like to call the, the jazzy scale. Uh, well, we're calling it jazzy. And then suggestive, which is... And then we have surprising. And then we have exotic down here. In any event, we're working with all four scales at once. We said, let's return to that and keep doing that. So we're smushing them all together and doing things. So based on that, we uh, made this score. And then we also had to edit a video. And the video is funnily enough, related to the metaverse. So here on the left-hand side, the first two bars sound like this. And in the video, the opening sounds like this. So yay, we got our music in. And then, as usual, for the extra section, the extra, we took this part. Over here, it sounds like. And of course, you know, it's 57 minutes long, but, you know, we care about the music. Yeah. But actually, it quite fits because it's, uh, it's kind of abstract, yet it's not too dissonant. And it kind of tells a story where the first, uh, I mean, this is a four five note scale and this is a six note scale and this is like a seven note scale and this is a ten note scale and so they kind of each of them if they were racing this is the one that finally ends and you hear it last so we have uh, rendered this video we've done all of our good things that we know to do we have added uh, captions uh, where is it we put timestamps everywhere and we've rendered it and we're going to do a QA on it uh, but back to that interesting diagram that we opened with this thing. Uh, it turns out this is related to our new project, which is what we call the social brain and small networks. So the idea here is that each of the 12 tones in the chromatic scale can be looked at as members participating in different networks. This is some abstract, and we're probably going to use real people names later on. For example, uh, C, E flat, and A are all in the uh, in all four scales. Well, what four scales are those? I hear you ask. Well, they are in this scale, this scale, this scale, and this scale. Those are the four tonalities. Um, these notes, D flat through G, 
can only be found in the middle two scales. So what scales are those? Well, they can only be found in CSO2 and HPO2. They can only be found in these two scales. And then similarly here, these can only be found in the first and third scale, which is basically that one and that one. And to beat it to death, these two notes can all be found in uh, this, which is not surprising because that's how we built CS11. Nevertheless, what stands out is these are four small world networks. The small world is like, oh, you know Jane? I know Jane, small world. So that's where that comes from. You find you talk to somebody else and you find out both of you know somebody else in common. So C talks to E flat and says, oh, you're in all four tonalities. Me too. And uh, like that. But there's no connection between these networks. On the other hand, if we look at them in terms of shared function, C stands alone. It's the only note that's a root. And it's the only root in all four scales, which is no big surprise. F2, which are the modes, um, this scale, which you call F3, we're using color-coded green here. I probably should darken that or something. Uh, is is none note functions. Uh, F4 is the urge, the, all the scale, uh, the notes that are urges in any of the four scales, like that. But funnily enough, um, down here, it's showing that it can, uh, because this G flat is in a scale with a mode, that means it's connected to the scales that have modes. So there's a mode connection from this one member of this F3 group. And similarly, this one member of the F4 group is connected by none notes. It has a none note in it, and oh my god, so it could... So in this F4 group, which is totally unconnected to F3, except they have one member who also knows the F3 group, so they are now connected. And similarly, not to beat it to death, but this member of the F3 group has connections over to the F2 group, which is the point. If you're trying to network and find other people with similar interests that you don't already know, that are not already in your small world network, that means one of your members at least has got to have what we're calling an exotic connection. In other words, a connection that's outside. It's exotic. Exotic means extra, foreign. And then we finally stretched our brain till it hurt, uh, trying to crisscross the network. So down the left-hand side are the the tonality groups, which are code colored blue. So for example, D and F are in, a, are in T4 and uh, these four are in T2. But then we cross-reference them with the vertical group, like F3 goes this way and F4 goes this way. Like we said, it made our brain hurt, but we figured it out. And the interesting thing is, this is the individual member's point of view. There's one pitch the way we did this which is c which is a member of uh of uh, the t1 group but it's the only member of the f1 group so it's and we're still trying to figure out how to interpret that we could say well that's the ultimate exotic member that doesn't seem right it, another way to say it is well it's us it's the i it's the me group and i belong to uh, some groups and then uh I have connections, I have connections to other groups that I don't necessarily belong in. And likewise, these people here have members who can connect to me. Anyway, uh, it's a concept diagram and we're going to be working with it further. So what we're going to do is play this extremely short <laughs> Metaverse VR1 for you and that will bring us home. So here we go. Ta -da! So, our ideas for next time are we we're going to QA the Office Hour video that we showed you a little bit of and share it when ready. Continue with the Metaverse VR scores. We've got several ideas for what to do there. And continue with that concept slide because there's uh, plenty of fun uh, ideas to chew on there. And again, we're crossing 
Music and Metaverse. We, uh, this series is all about cross-dimensional thinking and, and online presence. But So now we're crossing ideas of the Metaverse, which is a big buzzword right now, and Musica. Shoutouts to Silent Lurker, Methodic Innovator, and Nitpicker, who just joined us in this episode. <laughs> Nitpicker made sure we were following protocol on several things. Uh, tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back. And do keep on streaming.